So number nine is, if I would define the average value of a positive momentum in the x direction, what would the proper limit of integration, i.e. p sub x okay. times f of p sub x times the partial derivative of p sub x? No, 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 I got you, I got you. I'll tell you what, let me, let me uh, do this. So, so this is part of my lecture notes. Okay. Uh, so let me do that. I'm going to do your question, then I'll try to answer another one. So let me kind of launch into my lecture here because it answers that question. But I'm not going to do that question exactly because uh, that's that's a little too much. That's one of the harder ones. I don't. I, I kind of like doing a little bit of the easier ones that I'll just give it to you. Um, and plus, I, I will almost certainly put a question like this on the exam. Yeah, I won't do momentum, and I won't do the one I'm doing here, but, but this is good fodder for exam questions. Uh, oh, anyway, I just wanted to point out, by the way, what where average velocities are on maximum velocity distribution. Anyway, okay, so we're doing homework. We're doing homework, so I'm going to shut up about other stuff. Okay, now, in that question, it's momentum x, momentum y, momentum z, right? Oh, they just give you an x. Then, then, hold on, say, say the question again. Um, average value of positive momentum in the x direction. Okay, now, so what's happening is, what I've done is, I've taken the, the Boltzmann distribution of energy, and instead of 1 half mv squared, instead I put in p squared over 2 m. p squared over 2 m is energy in momentum form. Uh, and unfortunately, it's also in three vectors, px, py, pz. So, and I give you the formula for that, right? And that, so all the, all the derivations we did for velocity, I did them for momentum too. I just did them on my own, and those are the correct equations. Um, on the next homework, you're actually going to be working with net momentum. And in this one, I give you momentum in x, y, and z. So to answer that question, I'm going to go back to Maxwell Boltzmann in velocity but I'm not going to do velocity squared. I'm going to do I'm going to do vx, dy, dz. I mean, the way that looks is we still I mean, we have instead of the single integral with net velocity, we have a triple integral uh, uh, with uh, vx, dy, and dz. The normalizer is still the same, and what you end up with are three uh, three of these Gaussian fields. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to forget the KV, I'm just going to put K. Okay, it's VX, VY, VZ. Okay, now on your homework, what I've done is I've just basically done one of these. Okay. All right, so again, um, I know that I ballyhooed all last hour about turning this into net velocity, and, and we did it, and you saw the result, it's not that bad. But I never really had to do it. I can do things with this equation. This, this is more, th this is before the final result on the maximum volts, and I just never really fully wrote it out. Now I know it doesn't quite seem related to number nine, but just give me a second. Okay. Now what I've done is, all right, now you may notice the Maxwell Boltzmann. Here's the normalizer. You see an e to the mv squared over 2kt, except that it's still in x, y, and z form. And that's why there's three of them. Uh, and of course, then the three partials are still there. I don't have any motivation to get rid of these because I have a dx in the, in the partial of x. I have a dy in the partial of dy. So I actually want to keep this as it is. And so, so, so what? what? What do I do with this? Right now that I have it, it's, it's Cool, I have it, but so what? What can I get out of it? Um, okay, so here's a hypothetical exam question. What, what number of molecules are moving up? What number of molecules are moving up? That's a question I can answer with this. What's the probability of a molecule moving up? So if I have a gas, how many of them have a velocity in the positive direction? Or, which is the same thing, what fraction of molecules in a gas chamber are moving up. What fraction? Or what's the probability that they're moving up? That would be. That would have the exact same. Um, that's the same question. Uh, notice that. Uh, so that's the question I can answer with this. For one, there's a directional component. Number two, it's a probability. Directional. I've got it in x, y, and z. Probability because you see, the reason that I spent all that time turning this to net velocity because I can use it to calculate the the average net velocity. I can't do that with this. 
right? Because because I, I just can't. Um, I need I need that velocity. And I did that last hour. I just can't ask that kind of question. But I can ask the question that I just asked. What is the probability that a gas molecule is moving up? Okay, let's call up Z. All right now now okay okay let me, let me back up. Okay, triple integral. Uh, the in, inner one is for z, and let's let's go from minus infinity to infinity. Notice the also the change in limits. Let's make y go from minus infinity to infinity, and z go uh, x go from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, what's the answer to this, by the way? Give me a number. You should be able to integrate this in your head. Kind of one. It's one. Right. This is the probability that you're either moving forward or backward, or not at all. You're moving left or right, or not at all. Or you're moving up and down, or not at all. What's the probability of that? One. You're either moving forward, backward, up, down, left, right. You are certainly doing one of those three things. The answer is 1.0. OK. I'm going to throw that at you a lot, right? You know, that's a good exam question right there. It's an early exam question, uh, early in the test because it's easy. That's a hint. Okay, but now my question is, what is the probability of something moving up? Now, this is where it relates to the number nine. The question that, the, to answer number nine, it's really not about doing the integral because you just use an identity. It's getting the limits right. Now, what is, how, do, how, do you, how do you think I should do this? How should I do this? What is the problem? Now, I said, what's the probability of moving up, down, left, right, um, forward and backward, or not at all, uh, and that's 1.0. How do I do this for, say, what's the probability of moving forward and backward, left and right, but only up? Change, change, right, change the Z. Change the Z. There you go. Now, another reason I like this is because, uh, question, isn't that the X? Uh, you, I, I believe, oh, wait, 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 is, is inner, is it inner, inner? I forgot yeah, to rule down. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. I know that there actually is a rule about this. I can be kind of goosey goosey about that. Um, I, I really just forgot. I, I thought it was the other way. Yeah, there there is a rule by the way. And what integral sign goes with what partial? And I guess it's inner outer. Sorry, I got that confused. Um, okay. Now again, for those of you who may be a little bit concerned about your your calc, your multivariable calc, what I can do is diddy up these integrals. OK, there's the x. And tell you what, let me just do, there's a, a vy. And I'm not going to write it out because it, that sucks. Um, m over 2. 2 pi kvt, 1 half, e to the minus 10. Uh, one of the things that's hard about this is just not getting distracted or bored to death, the fact that you're just writing and writing and writing. OK. OK. Now, look for an identity. Look for an identity for this. And here, I'll go ahead and do it, even though it's a little a bit of a waste of time because I actually did it in the last hour, but maybe you don't recognize that, which is fine. Uh, you look for an identity. And uh, again, it's fair because this is what you find on the internet. That's why we have the internet. Okay, so you're looking for the right form. You're looking for the right limits. You got this one. The, the VY is the same, by the way. Vy is the same, so I'm not going to explicitly write that out. It's just I'm just being lazy. Okay, so what's this guy? And by the way, the answer is incredibly easy. One, one, one. Right now, you can do it two ways. One is to just do it. Um, actually, if you recall, when we solved the normalizers, I used this identity. What do normalizers do? They make the integral one. Well, the normalizer's still there. And I'm integrating over all possible values. So you should hopefully intrinsically know that this is one. I mean, there's actually three ways. One is to notice that this is a probability. It's normalized, and you're going over all possible limits. The other way is to, to know that a molecule is either moving forward or backward or not at all. 
either moving forward or backward and not at all is in between the zero. Okay. Or, or just straight up use the identity. You will get one. Okay. Um, same thing for you. Y, of course, is also one. I'm sorry to explicitly write it out. Now, this other guy I bet you can guess, but of course, let me give you an identity that I don't want to be hanging. And I use identities on the exam often as guide guidelines to help you figure out when you're doing it right. Now, there's two options. One, um, use the identity, or probably could just guess, and I would accept that on the exam if I asked something of, of this magnitude. So what do you think, huh? Over here, left side. Now again, triple integrals are just three integrals multiplied. We've already figured out that x and y was, x was one, y was one times the last one. I gave you an identity, or you could just say, what's the probability of molecules moving up versus down? Half. half. Right? You, you see, you notice how the difference is there's only half? Now, one reason is, I see, I don't even, you notice I didn't look at anything to write this down? It's because the limits are half and this is an even function. So, so it has to be, um, it has to be half. There you go. The probability of gas phase molecules moving up is half. Okay, so, yeah. These are the kinds of things I can do with Maxwell Boltzmann. So as much as I wrote down the Maxwell Boltzmann as net velocity, I actually got about 20 different Maxwell Boltzmanns. I have them in x, y, and z. I've got them in velocity, net velocity, velocity x, y, z. I've got them in momentum, momentum x, y, z. I've got them in energy, energy x, y, z. You're going to do that on your homework. So that's nine. I have nine different Maxwell Boltzmann equations. Okay, now, what did I do? I, to go back to the homework, uh, I said, what is the av what average momentum in the x direction? Is that the question? Average value of positive momentum. Average value, and I give you the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution of momentum, right? Uh, you write it as px and fpx, right? Uh oh, here, here. This is, yeah, sorry, let, let, me, let me just get it right. Okay, so I, of course I made certain that uh, this is the correct definition for an average. This is just one part of the triple, but the other two, the others, um, well, I'm not asking about the others. Okay. Um, and so what's the average momentum if you're moving forward? No, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Again. I gave you I gave you this formula, so so that's Bravens, right? I, I'm asking for average momentum, and I specifically said in the x direction. Okay, that means that I have an average. That means I need the Maxwell Boltzmann formula for that. I have to give it to you. I have to give it to you because what the hell? What I asked now the part you need to know is that you need to multiply that by the thing you want the average of. You know to do that because I asked you to do it. What is the average in the momentum in the x direction? Here's the max of Boltzmann. Multiply it by that thing that I asked. Partial. 90% there. The next thing is I put on a weird stipulation. Momentum can, things can go backward. Momentum can be minus, you can get negative momentum in, in x or y or z direction. But is that what I asked? I said, if it's moving, if it's positive. And so the way you designate these on averages, when you put stipulations on your averages, you, you, you put something like that. Anyway, it gets it across. OK, now, um, uh, and I gave you the formula of number eight. So all you do is plug in the formula for number eight, and you look for an identity. And unless I've done something really crazy, I would have given you the identity. I'm sure it's here somewhere. Anyway, so tell me if I if I screwed up didn't give you the right identity. Oh, there it is. I, yeah, I can see the identity. Okay, now now you may be thinking, what is the answer half? No. No, no. no. It, it can be way more complicated. It's going to be some function, right? Now, this would be half, but this wouldn't be average momentum either, right? This this is this is a probability. When you throw this in, a probability now becomes an average. And because of the weird use of limits, it has a stipulation. 
Okay, so anyway, that's how you set it up. Put in the function, get rid of the constants, look for the identity, do the identity, put the constants back in, and stop so that I give you full credit. If you want to simplify it, go ahead. The, the good thing is you can easily look up the answer on the internet to be one, see whether you did it right. Um, but remember, on an exam, if you simplify things and you get it right, when you write out the answer, you're done. You get full credit. If you simplify it, great. But if you get it wrong, you just lost a point. So don't do that. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. So is everyone okay? <laughs> no, it's kind of a lot to take in once you start doing it. it, it these really aren't hard. It's just that you're writing, 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 writing because these equations are so long. That's where it gets a little hard. That's not really hard. Uh, there's another question. Uh, it look, it's what? Like mine's number six, the quick computational one. I'm just like, I got an answer that doesn't correlate with the last part of seven, so I just want to know if I... Oh, number six is the, is the rectangle one? No, that's seven. But I think this is the one where it's like, assume perfect gas behavior. Um, you have a neon sign with... Um, oh, okay, so um, number, how do you do number six? Like, I got an answer, but it doesn't correlate with what I got for the last part of seven. So I just want to know if it's this right. Uh, okay, now, now hold on. Now seven, now for one, seven is an approximation. Seven is an approximate integral. The purpose of seven is, is kind of like my last lecture. I want you to understand what an integral is, right? Number seven will give you number six's answer if those rectangles are infinitely small and you add up an infinite number of them, which would take you at least a couple of weeks. Right. Well, we were over by like 140, and we're like, well, this can't be right. I, well, I don't quite remember the number offhand, but it shouldn't be that far off. Right, that's why I'm like... Okay. Well, okay, so, okay, well, in terms of number six, now I don't know which one you did wrong, so you have to come by office hours. Um, what is the thing you calculated in number six? Um, so for six, I used the pressure and volume to find joules, and I set that equal to the kinetic energy, one of them to be squared. No. No, 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 no. What you do for number six? Solve for temperature. Now, the reason is, is as you just saw, um, okay, so as you know, I do try to cover enough by Friday for you to do your homework. I hopefully do that. Can't say I do it perfectly. Um, you need the mass, that's the mass in kilogram per molecule. So what, what did I do with this? Neon? So the molecular weight of neon is what is it, 23? 20, 20, 20 what? 20.18. Oh, okay. So so 20.18. Divided by 1,000 in kilograms, divided by Avogadro's number, and that gives you the, the M. Uh, the rest of it are a bunch of constants. T is the only thing you're missing, which you get from the perfect gas equation. And I said assume perfect gas behavior. That was a hint. Remember, I leave hints. Um, where did we get that velocity equation? We just did it. Okay. That, that was in the last hour, right? This is the formula for average velocity. We just did it. It's not in your head because you just saw it a minute ago. Okay. Right. So that, that's what I meant to cover. Uh, any other questions? Because I do have one other thing I wanted to cover. I wanted to cover Earth's the um, number number um, number ten, number nine, number nine, no number ten, number ten. I wanted to show you what an Earth is. Um, it, it's also a lot of calc practice. Um, actually, no, that's not too bad. Is there any other? Uh, what you guys? Any other question? I said one question on number two. Number two. Um, the subscripts on the k's, those are the k's are still just constants, right? Uh, yeah, like yeah. It's not trying to apply k is like a function of x or y or whatever. Uh, let, let me point out, okay, so what, what do I have subscripts on number two? Um, it, there's meaning to it. There's meaning to it. And let me, you don't need to worry about it now, but it will come up later. Um, let me just point out that uh, I, so, so sometimes you see I subscript, sometimes I don't. I should probably always have them, so that's a little bit of laziness. <laughs> um, when you, what, what you're doing in numbers one, numbers one, by the way, um, I know it doesn't seem related to, to um, two, but um, 
Uh, sorry, you know, one, one and two A, one and two A, those are quantum mechanical expressions, by the way. I'm, you know I do this. I'm making you practice for things you're going to be doing in about a month. So it's a bunch of math, so I'm making you do it now so that it won't blow your head off a month from now when we get to quantum. So these are quantum mechanical calculations. You will see them again. I want to make sure you can do the math. Um, it matters sometimes when you're doing quantum mechanics what happens in Y is not related to what happens in X. So if you have a particle that has certain momentum in Y, it is completely decoupled from its momentum in X, even though it's the same object moving. And so that's designed to keep that straight. If I failed to keep this straight, when we get to quantum mechanics, some of the theorems I'm going to show will fail. They don't fail if I write these things out. And, and you make sure that you know that those are not necessarily the same K. They are not the same K because they're in different directions. They could be the same, but that's happenstance. Like that's for a particle. Kx and Ky is for a particle moving exactly diagonally. So anyway, that's why that's important. Any other, any other questions? Do we treat them as constants, Ky and Ky? Yes, they are constants. They will be constants even when, we cover, even when we get to quantum, they're constants. But they're not the same number. They're not necessarily the same number. Their moment, by the way, they're momentums, by the way. So they're in kilograms per meter, kilogram meters per second. When we get to quantum, you're going to see all that. I just want you to get used to seeing these things and doing these things now. Right now, they're just math questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other? Okay. Last bit. Last bit. I wanted to show you Earth. What the heck is an Earth? And um, and show you where. I know this is going to sound kind of nutty, but I wanted to show you where that identity comes from, and um, and a little bit how to use it because this is just a, a little bit of math practice. As I was badly doing last hour, your math skills are more valuable than your chemistry skills. <laughs> That's true. I think, well, what am I saying? I'm saying this to a room full of engineers. So when I'm doing 344 for biochemists, I, I, I have to work on them a lot harder than I do you. But anyway, I wanted to show you what, uh, what an earth is. Um, and um, so where, where am I at? Where am I at? Sorry. I'm, uh, so I have this expression on your homework. And um, the purpose of this expression is what, what I'm having you do is figure out the probability that a molecule is moving, what, faster than the root mean square speed. Um, uh, yeah, here it is. So, and I have you use this identity. And I want to show you where the identity comes from because, again, it's a really, it's actually kind of a fascinating math lesson. And what an earth is. An earth is a function, kind of like how sine is a function. You have to have it like in a calculator, or as I mentioned to you, on your homework, let me give you a hint for number 10, on your homework, when you do it right, you're going to have earth of like 2 or earth of pi. Anyway, you're going to have a discrete, the answer to number 10 is going to be, a, is, is like 0.53 or 0.47. It's a number. So you're going to get earth of like pi or something. Again, I'm sorry, I don't quite remember exactly what. Type it into Google and the answer pops up. So it's a function just like sine. So anyway, so I want to show you where this, where this expression comes from. Because you're, there's a lot of just math practice and a lot about statistics in this. Especially when it comes to the earth. It's, oh, 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 that's not the full expression. This part here, this, this part that I'm, uh, actually comes from the x squared. It comes from a... Um, integration by parts, that thing I was going nuts a minute ago, trying to remember. That's a result of integration by parts. We'll see that in a second. Okay, what the heck is Earth? Uh, and for error function, I don't know where that comes from. Earth, let's give, uh, let's feed it a, a, a value, because again, like sine, you have to give it sine of pi or it doesn't mean anything. Uh, this is just the definition. It is an integral. It is the result of a definite integral, uh, the upper limit being c. OK, so so what? Well, graph it. Let's graph it. It's going to be a lot more meaningful. Let's center ourselves in 0. And e to the minus x squared is a bell-shaped curve. Didn't draw that very well, but no, now I'm bothered. It must be perfect in the world to explain. 
OCD anyway. <laughs> okay, that's better. Bell-shaped curves, right? Very important statistics. Uh, and Earth is the integral of the bell-shaped curve. So yeah, that, that ends up being like really horribly important. So I'm, I really just, I kind of want you to see that just for seeing it safe. Uh, okay, now as we go from zero and we move forward, um, we're building up area. Now, the funny thing is you may think, well, oh yeah, the area starts out pretty big. No, it doesn't. When C is close to zero, the area is quite small. So you actually start out at zero. So here, let me, let me uh, I'm now graphing the Earth function. You actually start close to zero, and then it quickly goes to one. The reason it goes to one is that this is a normalization constant, by the way. That's the normalization for, the, for a Gaussian. So the Earth uh, value goes to 1.0 because, um, because it's normalized. Uh, it goes to 1 very quickly uh, around when you feed it a value of 2. Now that you think, well, what, what's special about the number 2? Um, you, you see, the upper limit here, as it applies to your question 10, this is going to be, guess what, m over 2 pi kt, m over 2 kt m over 2 kt, this can be m over 2 kt, and that is your most probable speed. And when you multiply them, you're going to get a finite number. Right? So that's how this works. Earth is technically symmetric. Not that that's a big deal. I just, I just want you to, to know about Earth because it actually is kind of important. I, mean, I, I actually run into Earths a lot uh, in a bunch of settings. Okay, that's an Earth. Now, the thing is, though, Notice that this is e to the minus x squared. Now you've got two problems when it comes to your homework. Remember, you're not actually doing this. I'm just showing you where this, where this identity comes from. Problem number one, you're not integrating minus x squared. You're integrating minus ax squared. Now you may think like, well, okay, well, I'll just ignore it. Just like last time, no. You can't ever do that. The other thing is that you have an x squared. This part actually isn't a big deal. You solve this by integration by parts. So that you should be able to do even in Calc 1. This part, going from x squared to minus ax squared, normally I would look at that and say, oh, that's not a big deal, just ignore it. Turns out that's the hard part, so you don't ignore it. Now, the reason I want to cover this is not only just for Earth, but because on the next problem set, you're going to have to do something similar, but easier, trust me, easier. What I'm going to do is kind of hard, and what you do on the homework next homework is, is a lot easier, but it's in the same spirit. The spirit is transformation of variables. You did do that, right? Yes. Yeah, right? Jacobians? You remember yeah. Jacobians? <laughs> right. Okay. So, and the reason I gave you the formula for momentum, Maxwell-Boltzmann, is because <laughs> you're going to figure out the momentum Maxwell-Boltzmann equation by transformation of variables in the next homework. Okay, so, so I'm going to do a transformation of variables homework. I'm, I'm glad you know what it is. The biochemists sometimes don't even know what it is. Um, and I'm going to give a pretty hard example. Okay, now note that, uh, so what I'm going to do is transform a function of x into an integral of a different function g of y. Now in this case, um, in this case, um, I can already see that if these two are going to be the same thing, that I've already got a very simple relationship that's been developed. A g of y is x. Right? So f of x and f of g of y are the same thing, so nothing has changed. That's really nice. Now, you may be thinking, like, wait, I've already lost all these x's and y's. Let's go ahead and apply it to the example above. Let's make, um, where am I? Uh, let's make this function that we have a problem with because it has an a, it has an a in it, right? Minus ax squared, and that a is, I'm telling you, is a problem. And we're gonna make that, uh, we're gonna call that y squared, right? So you see in the upper, upper example, if I substitute minus ax squared for y squared, it turns into, it turns into this, right? It turns into e to the minus something squared. And that's solvable with an earth, right? So, so here you go. I'm, I'm going to get rid of 
minus ax squared, and I'm just going to call it y squared, because again, that, the answer to that is going to be in Earth uh, by that second equation there. It doesn't matter that the y became an x. That's, that's irrelevant. That's maybe the hardest part about this. Um, okay, so, um, so, my, so there's my x, and it's there. But I haven't solved for, you know, now here's, here's where it gets a little tricky here. When you do this on your homework, this is the part you've got to be careful of. I'm going to make the equation that you're trying to convert between very explicit, but what I don't make explicit is that what you need to do is solve for x, right? So x is going to be y over the square root of a. Remember my therefore. So there we go. All right, now, now what that's for will be more clear in a minute. Let me finish this up. I converted f of x to f of x by simply substituting g of y for x. So wherever there's an x, I'm going to have y over the square root of a. So that's easy, right? So I, I gave you this. I give this to you. You solve for x. Wherever there's an x in the function, instead you write y over the square root of a. Of a and now you've got f of g of y, but it's still the same as f of x. Yeah. It'll be more concrete if, if you're having a little trouble. It'll be more concrete when I actually work it. Okay, now I have to do with this guy. Remember this, for those of you who speak math, this is the Jacobian. I can't just, just like I couldn't substitute dx, dy, dz for dr, I can't just write dy. What I have to do is I have to, I've got to look at my own notes. I always thought this was very clever. This is what you're doing, and this part is called a Jacobian. Now, why this works the way it was, uh, the partial of g of y is actually the partial of x, divided by the partial of y, which is the derivative of whatever, times the partial of y is the partial of x. So notice that when you do these transformations, you've got f of x dx, and when you end up with f of x dx, it's the same thing. It gives you the same answer, the cool part is, it now has a different variable. It's now actually giving you different information while being the same thing. I actually did this when I did the Boltzmann equation as a function of energy, and I made it a function of velocity. That's what I was doing. You're in the next homework going to turn velocity, I think, into momentum. Or it might be energy. Anyway, I forgot what I asked. But <laughs> it's actually on there. Uh, and this is how you do it. Hard part is recognize the function, solve for x, uh, and then substitute in. That solves this, and then do this part. Practice, I know this is still probably way too abstract, so let me actually solve it. I'll leave this up here. This will be your, your guiding principle, and I will, and I will make it uh, much more concrete by, by actually doing it. You can't really see that so well, can you? Um, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll actually solve for the earth. Uh, with that more complex identity, which is on your homework. I don't really know. You know, all this is brand new. I that's the way that goes. I have to remember that. Okay. That one. Um, okay. Oh, here. I'll just write that here. X is equal to Y over the square root of it. Okay. So. Um, let me solve the function g of y dy. Okay. Now the trick is to note what the function g of y is. It's x. Well, I just solved it right there. So this is the change in y over the square root of a with respect to y, which is one over the square root of a. Okay half the problem solved. There you go. Okay, so now, I'm actually, this is crazy, I'm actually almost done. Um, integral u <coughs> to minus ax squared dx is now equal to the integral of e to the minus y squared. You see what I like about this? Again, this is an earth. It doesn't matter that I change an x to a y. Um, so I got the Jacobian, which is square root of a uh, dy. 
that right? Yeah. There you go. So it looks like I got an earth. I got an earth. Uh, it, it, I just picked up a one over square root of eight. That, that's it. Um, and then I'm going to do, um, th th we're almost there. Uh, question? OK. So um, actually, I've misled you slightly. I misled you slightly. You notice that I didn't. I haven't written the whole thing out. Actually, let me let me uh, let me um, let me write it a little bit differently so it's a little bit more clear. What's what? So here's the Jacobian. Now again, this looks like an Earth to me. It, it, it is. It is. There's a slight problem. Notice that I didn't write the limits. I didn't write the limits. You actually have to transform the limits too. And we have to use this guy right here. Now, in the original equation, the lower limit was x equals 0. So y is equal to what? Pretty zero. 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 OK. OK, the lower limit is still 0. OK, the upper limit was c. Therefore, y is equal to what? c is the square root of a. Yes, c times the square root of a. And you may recall that that's actually in the identity, which I believe is. Oops. Okay. So, C times the square root of A. Okay. We're done. That's basically it. Uh, now, now, let me put that in Earth form. Let me put that in Earth form, and we'll be done with this part. Um, let, me, let me write down. Now, actually, I do struggle a little bit with this. Um, this is this is a bit of a problem for me because I just get a little flummoxed. Let's see, go from zero to c, e to the minus x squared dx is um, root of pi over two. Earth Let's see. Okay, um, so I don't have too hard a time with the earth. But I've got an earth of c times the square root of a. That's not too hard. I still got a square root of pi over two. And let's see. I think I um, I just pick up a square root of a. Yeah. So actually, it's not that bad. Which is just just, just comes right over there. Is that right? Um, uh, um, let me make sure. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That's how you do transformation variables. So um, the trick is, is look at that formula up there, which will be on the cheat sheet. Identify your x's and y's. Transform the function. Do the Jacobian. Don't screw up the limits. Next part. Next part. We're almost done. So we will end on time. Next part, uh, this part is actually kind of uh, stupid easy, is, um, um, is uh, where, where am I at? It's uh, integration by parts. So let me, let me wipe this out. So now we have to do the integral x squared minus ax. So we're going to do it by parts. Okay, and I have to admit I always see a little performance by, by this. Um, and where am I at? I, um, uh, let's see here. Um, integration by parts. Actually, what I'm going to do is, let me do Maxwell Boltzmann. You know, let me do a Maxwell Boltzmann. Um, let me make this concrete. Let me, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this more in the form of your homework so that it's a little bit more relevant to you. So um, I'm going to do your C, B squared, E to the minus A, B squared. So, so this way it makes a little bit more sense when you do your homework. So I'm going to do all the devices. Um, integration by parts <coughs> is integral of f times the derivative of g is f times g minus the integral of g times the derivative with respect to f. Uh, I have a proof on your, uh, look on that one of the handouts, I have a proof of that. It's, it's incredibly simple. It's, it's really, um, there you go. 
I don't want to get thrown off by any rules. Okay. So uh, how do I apply that to this? I'm going to say f is a unit of velocity, and therefore the derivative of f is dv. Okay, g. The derivative of g is going to be um, uh, b e to the minus a d squared. A, of course, is the square root of um, square root of, uh, of I mean, m over two k t. Okay, so that's that's g, and therefore g itself. I have to integrate this and. Um, One over a, one over two a. Okay. So um, remember, I, I told you. I, I don't know if you think this way, but I do integrals by antiderivatives. So is the derivative of this that? I'll see. I bring down an a, so the a is gone. The minus a, the minus is gone. And then I have to do the derivative of b squared. That's two b. Uh, the two gets wiped out. Yeah. So that works. See that. So, um, so I'm doing integration by parts on this thing. I've identified my, my f's and g's and my g's primes and my f primes and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so now I can do this thing. I can do this thing. And this is the, this is the identity you have to do in your, in your homework. Okay, fg, <coughs> fg is velocity. Uh, g, oh, I pick up a minus sign, that's unfortunate over 2a, e to the minus, um, okay, there's that. Um, it gets limits because this is a definite integral. Okay, so there's the first part. And then the second part is minus, minus the integral. Uh, again, the limits apply. And then this is the derivative of f, which is dv. Uh, so there's not much there. So instead, it's just a. So the minuses will cancel. That's cool. Uh, uh, e, um, a squared. OK. There you go. And um, I have painted myself to a corner because I wrote below it, which is stupid as hell. Sorry about that. Let me, uh, let, yeah. one of the worst things I've ever done with this board. All right, let me continue down. There's only two more steps and then we're free. And then I've got to go to Chinese language class and scream about the chairman. Uh, let's see. Okay, that first part, let's see. Uh, the first part's easy because the upper limit is minus c e to the minus a c squared over 2a. The lower limit is 0 because I've got minus 0 e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, but it's times 0. So the lower limit is gone. And then I've got the, the, um, the two minuses subtract. Here we see. And I've got an identity for that. Okay, so the answer is um, this ends up being uh, one over two a. Uh, um, I've already done this part. Square root of pi over a. Earth. Uh, what, what did I? Two factors. Uh, I've got one over two a, one half. And this, uh, let me let me just combine this. Pi <coughs> over sixteen a cubed earth uh, c times square root of a minus c. I'm reversing the order because uh, the the first term is is negative, and so it makes sense to have a positive term, just subtract a negative term. 
So there you go. If you recall, look at question 10, that's the identity. So there you go. I know it's, um, so one reason I know that this is all pretty painful because I spent like nearly half an hour doing one derivation. I had to do it in parts to combine them to the final answer. Um, I want you to get kind of used to this because this is how quantum works. Derivations that take all day, different pieces that assemble together, and you can get lost in the, in the, in the process. That, that's going to happen a lot, but um, video, right? <laughs> Watching. Anyway, all right, guys.